Hey fellow murder peeps, I'm your host Sarah. And I'm Anthony. Welcome to Bonding Over Murder, the show where I tell Anthony true crime stories he's never heard of before. And I was happy you're not knowing. Well, we're down the rabbit hole, so we might as well keep going with it. <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> uh, got a case you want us to cover? Email us at bondingovermurder at gmail.com. Today we're going to be looking into Pedro Rodriguez Filo, a.k.a. Killer PD or Pendrino Matador. Oh, boy. What? <laughs> Pedro what? Pe- Pedrino Pe- Matador. Pedrino Matador. Okay, well, that's easy enough to say. I thought we had a different last name. That's just one of his nicknames. Oh. The actual name is Pedro Rodriguez Filo. Oh, Pedro Rodriguez Filo. Okay. Which I had to look out how to pronounce it because it's spelled F-I-L-H-O. I wish I knew how to roll my R's, but I, I can't. I, I, <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I can't do it. <laughs> no, we, we, we got the English tongue, you know? Like, it just... I, I don't know what it is. I can't roll my R's. Neither can I. I like when people roll the the R in my name, though. It, it sounds it sounds very fancy. <laughs> if I could roll my R's, I would roll my R's with everything. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rodriguez, your name would sound awesome. <laughs> but you're going to have to deal with us not being able to sound uh, good with our rolling of R's. So here we go. We speak good. <laughs> Okay, Pedro Rodriguez Filo was born on June 17, 1954, and lived on a family farm in Santa Ita do Sapucaí. Oh, yeah, this is going to go on for a while. <laughs> well, it's, it's based in Brazil. He lived in a place. In Brazil. <laughs> I, I Googled how to pronounce it, and I put the phonetics in the, in the script, so I know how to pronounce it properly. <laughs> If I sound bad, I'm sorry, you can correct me, but that is what Google told me how to pronounce it. He was born with a head injury due to his father abusing his mother while she was pregnant with him. Oh. So basically, uh, his dad kicked his mother's stomach, and he oh. had a misshapen skull from it. Wow. Yeah, he's... he's um, The yeah, spawn he, of a piece of work. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, it's, it is a miracle that he survived that. Yeah, I don't know how far along she was with him when his father did that. But, like, the chances of that, to sustain that kind of damage in, like in, 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 in utero and then and still come out, it's interesting. It's horrible, horrible, but interesting. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, his, his story is very interesting. No oh, good. This is how I like to spend my Sundays. <laughs> Actually, out of all the people we've done, I it's hard to say that you like someone, but... I like him the most. Okay, well, I'll reserve my judgment till we get there. Yes. So he never went to school and would not learn how to read until he later went to prison. Oh. So he he was illiterate until he went to prison and then learned how to read and write while he was in prison. (laughs) Another child left behind by the education system, but strangely picked up by the criminal system. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So his home life was rough. They were a poor family with eight children, including him. His mother was known to be a strict disciplinarian and would beat her children to keep them in line. Oh, my. So, I mean, they're they're both kind of okay. hardcore. Okay, yeah, um, hardcore. Yeah, I'm going to use that word, <laughs> hardcore. <laughs> uh, his father worked as a security guard for a local school and was generally liked by his coworkers. It said accepted, but, like, they're kind of the same thing to me. All right. Um, <laughs> so, what, was he the, he was the fun dad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. 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 We, we don't like the dad. We don't okay. like him. He's, he's a dickhole. He is like the biggest dickhole you can find in the history of dickholes, I think. Yeah, except you said that about every single serial killer we've got so far. No, I give them all different things. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> They're all, all of them are the worst. There's no conversion <laughs> chart, but you know, whatever. You're um, like, you're like Michael Scott with the, with the, Gold star and the exactly thumbs up. That's exactly what I was referring <laughs> to, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I don't mind being. She gave today. she gave this serial killer the major dickhole badge, and then <laughs> this serial killer got the king of douches, and then this so legend, level legendary, level legendary, and then the other one got an S class. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, mean, I don't have a chart; it just comes to me at the well, moment. Check in the back of the book. Maybe there's a conversion chart. <laughs> just check. <laughs> uh, so his grandfather was the one that taught him many life skills such as swimming and skinning animals uh, his grandfather 
Well, they're hooked on a sword. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I just love how that's skill number two. <laughs> Sonny, I will teach you to swim and skin animals. She taught him other life skills. <laughs> and other life skills. And other life skills, yeah. Uh, so his grandfather was his role model, and um, it's believed that he would get a strong hatred for injustice from his grandfather. Okay. Yeah. So he's he's dark Batman, right on. Uh, he's called Brazil's Dexter Killer. Oh, okay. For, for reference. Okay. I I like because um, we're from Edmonton. Edmonton has what's called the Dexter Killer, which I'll probably cover in a future episode. Okay. Um, he's but it was uh, underwhelming. So when I found him, I was like, oh, like an actual like Dexter Killer type person. So, okay. Cool. Yeah. Pedro and a larger cousin of his to help out by feeding the sugar cane into the press to get the juice out of the stock. So they're basically giant rollers with like the spiky bits okay. that, that crush it and then turn it into, and then like that's how they juice it. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, it's like, I, I had to Google pictures of large ones. So yeah, it's basically uh, large rollers smushing it. And some of them have like the, the ridges and stuff. Right. Either way, it's yeah. pretty simple. Yeah, yeah. basically juice and uh, sugar cane. So here's where we escalate a little bit. Uh, This is where he would commit his first crime at age 13 by almost killing said cousin by feeding his arm through the sugarcane press. Oh, he did it on purpose? Yes. Oh, my. Uh, His cousin's arm was completely mangled all the way to his shoulder, and his body was pushed up against the press machine, and he couldn't move, obviously. Wow. Yeah. Um, Just a little backstory. It was known in the family that Pedro would get bullied by this cousin, and the family did nothing to help him. Oh. So this cousin was larger and would constantly bully him. And then I think at one point he was just like, you know what, fuck you. Like, okay. I'm, I'm done with your, your bullshit. <laughs> uh, I, I told you. It's, yeah. It's, Gross. Yeah. Okay, moving on. So he did spend a couple of days in jail for this, but his family needed his help running the farm. So no charges were laid, and police released him because he was a minor. Oh. Huh. But as punishment by his family, he was forced to clean the blood off the sugar cane press, which took him four weeks to complete. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> you so, think about what you've done, mister. <laughs> you clean your cousin's arm juices out of the juicer. <laughs> I don't know if his family react like, man, that family is violent. <laughs> I'm like, ah, <laughs> oh, Pedro, <laughs> you just had to juice your cousin's arm, didn't you? Well, now you clean out the juicer and you think about what you've done while you clean it. Like, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's family. Some violent humans. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, a year later, at age 14, his father got fired from his job because of accusations of him stealing lunch and stationery. First off, why? <laughs> <laughs> that was my first question. I was like, what? He got fired for people accusing him of stealing somebody's lunch and stationery. He's basically Homer Simpson. (laughs) Grammy walks in. Simpson, have you seen my lunch? And Homer's just like gobbling it down and he's also got his pencils and he's chewing on them. (laughs) But that's why he got fired. It it wasn't even confirmed that he did it. It's just there's accusations. There's no evidence that he did do it. And they're like, fuck you, you're gone. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so oh, you should smell his breath at least. Be like that is tuna fish, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever uh, lunches you eat in Brazil. Tuna fish. Would it be? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what fish is around Brazil. This is butt talking, by the way. I, oh. I love how you believed me instantly. Uh, so just for the record, butt talking is when you spout facts that aren't actually you don't actually hundred percent know, but you're confident in them to make yourself sound impressive. Yes, all Brazilians eat tuna fish. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, so because of this, it was impossible for his dad to get another job. Um, because I guess reputation's a big deal in that. Like, it, it's a hard thing to... Uh, okay, I mean, the culture changes from culture to culture. So we assume in this culture that, you know, when you get fired, that the word spreads around and people don't really want to well, hire especially you. Especially for stealing, stealing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's better. Yeah, because it's a, it's a rural community, so yeah. they all talk. It's possible he couldn't get through an interview without stealing a pencil. <laughs> Oh, it just reminds me of that uh, one guy, my name is Ralph, who's like obsessed with stealing pens. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, Pedro had to help support the family by hunting monkeys and selling their pelts to be made into leather. Nice. Monkey leather. 
I'd like to get a monkey leather jacket. Be like, this jacket is made of monkeys. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was kind of weird too, but I mean, we don't, we don't have monkeys, so I can't rare, really say. Rare Brazilian monkey leather. <laughs> it just doesn't sound well, good. Well, well, they got the rainforest, right? I mean, yeah, so, but what uh, monkeys uh, okay. Are there? I mean, don't don't quote me on what specific monkeys are there, but I imagine yeah. there's a wide range of primates living in the Brazilian rainforest. I would assume so. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think because the ones I can think of all come from Africa. You know yeah. what I mean? Like obviously chimps and gorillas and that. And I think I think spider monkeys maybe. Oh, you know what? I think gibbons. I think they have gibbons in in um, the and South American. And those would be decent sized for leather. Yeah, I think they but have I, gibbons. I remember, yeah. I remember re- watching that on a BBC. But other than that, I can't. Remember. Yeah, neither do I. That being said, I mean, I don't think gibbon is a monkey. It might just be a. Baby. And that's what I was wondering. Yeah. We're going to have to do some googling after this. All gibbons eat tuna fish. And more butt talking. <laughs> Here we go. So Pedro's mother would also work as a maid and laundress to help out with the bills as well, since his father wasn't able to get work right. because of this. Okay. The whole um, violent family pulls together. Yeah. I mean, you got to do what you got to do, you know? Um, so Pedro was very upset about this injustice. So he killed the mayor, who was the man who fired his father. Oh, wow. Uh, the mayor fired his father? When did this happen? Well, that was the person who fired him from the school for the accusations of stealing the lunch in the station. <laughs> the mayor has nothing better to it's, do? It's just a rural community. He's got a great thing to do. I know, but even in a rural community, the mayor comes down to the school. Well, <laughs> like, I believe the mayor's the one that hired him as a security guard. Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And then on later... Peter also killed the man he believed to be the actual perpetrator of stealing the lunch in the stationery. No, oh, I hope he got it right. <laughs> uh, we don't know that. <laughs> Poor Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta use a Brazil name for... Poor Brazilian Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Pedro murders Brazilian Jimmy over a lunch. <laughs> and stationery. And, sta- and, and, and lunch and a pencil. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then after he killed uh, Brazilian Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. Uh, he covered his body with fire furniture and boxes and set it on fire to dispose of it. The body. Didn't want those, didn't want that couch? <laughs> Is it just like two birds with one stone? I don't think it was in his house. Hmm. I think maybe it was at school, perhaps. Okay. Because he was also a security guard. Yeah, yeah, you can see the logic for, you know, couches burn. Mind you, he's only 14 at the time, so he's just like, you know. He's a master monkey leather crafter at uh, at 14, right on. His grandfather did teach him how to skin animals. And swim. And swim. Don't forget, he also knows how to swim. (laughs) He's a very good swimmer. (laughs) Too many office references. Yeah. (laughs) After this, he was forced to flee and moved in with his godmother in. Moji Descruzies. <laughs> <laughs> Moji Descruzies. I, I believe that's how that's pronounced. I, have to, I, I, I googled how to pronounce these things, but if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. And it's known as the tuna fish capital of the world. Moji Descruzies. Stop with your butt <laughs> Uh It's located in Greater Sao, pa- Sao Paulo. Well, that helps. Narrow it which down. Which is three hours and 40 minutes away from Santa, Santa Ita. Oh, okay. Well, that actually does help. I Google Maps these things. Oh, know. okay, right on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I don't know where it is. I know nothing about yeah. Brazil ge- like geography. So this is where he entered the drug trade and was recruited by a woman named Booty. Hold on, he just entered the drug trade. Yeah, I mean, so, I'll, I'll so, get to Booty later. <laughs> well, no, Booty's part of why he got into the drug trade. So she's a widow of a drug dealer, and uh, she would bring in young people into the business. So she recruited people. So she probably found him kind of. Uh, by chance, I'm assuming, and then was like, "How do you like?" Yeah, I don't actually know her her actual name. They just said booty, so you know we're gonna go with it. Okay. Um. So she, like I said, she was the widow of a drug dealer, and she brought people in, into the drug trade business. Uh, she also had a sexual relationship with Pedro at the time, as one does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is you know, is he, he still fourteen? He's still fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's still fourteen, and I don't know how old she is though, but. Seeing as she's a widow, she's probably like, oh. All right. 
Um, but because of this relationship with Booty, he often got the higher end jobs um, in the drug <laughs> business, uh, which made the other members jealous. It's like he got to sleep with that Brazilian booty. <laughs> That'll get you the jobs. Uh, apparently it does. Yeah. Yeah. And then at one point, he robbed a drug lord named China, taking his guns and drugs, also killing one of his men and injuring China in the process. This will be tied back later. Okay. On why I'm talking about China. Also, why is he called China? I don't know. Maybe he's from China. Makes sense. <laughs> like people that name their children after actual locations? I believe it's a nickname or perhaps a street name. No, uh, man, that's China. We call him that because he's from China. <laughs> yeah, 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 I guess that is how nicknames get started. There you go. They are all geniuses. Right? Um, so at this time, he also became a target of Brazil's death squads, uh, who were made up of off duty police officers and state security forces. I believe, unfortunately, they're still a thing today. Wow. Off duty officers. So, what's yeah. what's their objective? Like, just like thugs, basically. Like when they're done policing, they go around and just do what they want as like a big gang, essentially. Yeah. So it says they search the streets for drug dealers, homeless people, and street children. Oh. Yeah, they're not good. Hence, oh my! Anything called a death squad? Can it really be good? I mean, I, I no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. No, I suppose not. That and stormtroopers never are never uh, good things. Yeah. yeah. Although I know stormtroopers is not just a Star Wars thing. No, like, that's what I, I was talking. I was actually talking about historically. I, I know, but like every time I hear stormtrooper, I think of the, the stormtroopers from Star Wars. But they were miss. bad guys too. So fine. Yeah, no fair. Couldn't aim with a shit. <laughs> well, that's the funny part. Yeah. No, it's not. Well, I meant like for the Star Wars ones, not for these people. No. Oh. Um, so their actions were approved by the military and they had and had no consequences for the awful things they did. Right. It was sanctioned by the military to just basically have free reign. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that basically just blatant uh, corruption of, of law enforcement and military. It yeah. Can, it can happen. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, anything with the word death squad, you're not good. Sorry, guys. I like to think there will someday in the future be death squads that go around and hand out the um, uh, little teddy bears to the squad. And how to prevent death. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They how go to you they prevent go, death in heinous ways? They go to the schools and hand out teddy bears and teach them how not to die. <laughs> like the D.A.R.E. program? But they teach you how not to die in the D.A.R.E. program? Well, I'm just saying they're like the D.A.R.E. program, but instead of drugs, it's, you know... <laughs> You know, for death. For death. For not dying. For not dying. For not dying. Gotcha. Yeah. We should find found this death squad. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, so to avoid a, to avoid the death squad and his other enemies, he went into hiding and was constantly on the move. He slept in cars, cemeteries, and churches to hide from them. Uh, despite being in hiding, he still went to a drug transaction with Booty. Uh, but they are ambushed by police who are tipped off by other drug dealers. Pedro and the booty strikes again. <laughs> oh, they were ambushed. It's Pedro and the booty ambushed again. I gotta watch this show, man. Pedro and the booty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he's 16 at this point, and so he was severely injured and still managed to escape. But booty was killed in the raid. No! <laughs> I like to think Booty was a large sassy woman. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the mental image I would have her too, like tough as nails, you know? Yeah, well, either way. Anyway. Rest in peace, Brazilian Booty. <laughs> you fine, fine Brazilian Booty. <laughs> are, are there other booties in different countries? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so... After this, he stayed with extended family, and I didn't catch the religion's name. It was hard to pronounce as well. So uh, he joined a religion that was viewed as either witchcraft or black magic. Oh, fun. So the main belief of the religion was that good and evil are irrelevant, and that harm done to a person will come back to the person who inflicted the harm. It's kind of like being a Sith, except for the karma part of it, where the harm comes back to you. It's like karma Sith. There is no good and evil. There's well, only power under those two weeks. Yeah, I don't think you're going to like some of it. Okay. Um, I'm sure I won't. Yeah. 
So they had ceremonies that included offerings, ceremonial dancing, and animal sacrifices. No. Oh. Blood was used in many of the ceremonies and was believed to represent life, life's pure essence and is the most sacred substance. Okay. Uh, so just a little trigger warning. There is hardcore animal abuse coming up right now. So oh. um, just skip this next, like, you know, what, like 30 seconds and then you can, you'll you know, be on the other side of it if that's something you can't handle. Tuna if, fish. Yes. Well, not, not tuna fish, but. They, they were not part of the, the animal abuse. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when he joined, they shaved his head and eyebrows for his initiation. <laughs> That's a good look. Yeah, right. I was like, why the eyebrows? <laughs> so it's, it just looks like a penis. <laughs> He's got no hair on him anywhere. <laughs> like, I get the head, but the eyebrows? Why the oh, eyebrows? That'll be a great look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no photos of that unfortunately. Um, so his initiation took place in a quarry after midnight. Okay. Uh, while people danced to drums, Pedro was forced to kill a cat, then drink its blood, and place entrails over his body. Oh, nice. This is for why there's a trigger warning. Yeah. Um, the body, the cat's body, would then be filled with seeds and then buried. Okay. He would return to the burial site a week later to take the seeds, and then his uncle made them into a necklace and was and he was told never to take it off. Like Pedro was never was told never to. Take ah. It off. So he believed after this incident that he was invincible and viewed himself as a defender of the weak and vulnerable. <laughs> He's not allowed to take it off, but the seeds start sprouting. <laughs> He's got a little necklace of sprouts. <laughs> I mean, when that happened, they were in a cat's corpse for a week. Oh, uh, it depends on the seed. Some seeds will actually start to sprout out of the ground. I mean, look at, <laughs> look, at look at Creed and his mung beans. <laughs> 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 Turns out Pedro's wearing a necklace of mung bean sprouts. <laughs> he would steal food trucks to feed people in the slums, burn down shops if he felt that the owners had cheated customers, and steal from drug dealers he felt were bad, and then sold the drugs only to those he saw as righteous. So okay. Basically, kind of a Robin Hoodish vibe, minus the drug part. Yeah, and the cat blood, and, and the, the cat and blood, the, yeah. and the mung beans hanging around his neck. <laughs> <laughs> smells like old man. <laughs> Pedro has a distinct old man smell. <laughs> uh, so around this time is when he fell in love with a woman named Maria Aparcita Olympia. Okay, Miss Olympia. <laughs> yes, Miss Olympia. Uh, they moved in together and Maria got pregnant. So right they were about to have the first child together. Um, unfortunately, she was murdered when she was seven months pregnant, and uh, the infant didn't make it. Yeah. Does it say who murdered her? Uh, it... We're getting to that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so this part is a little upsetting as well, just so you know. It's all upsetting. We're bonding over murder. Get over it. I, I know. But, um, so the killers then used her blood to write, we will get you on the wall. Oh, my. That's why I said that. Rival cartel or something. Um. So since he had a lot of enemies, he didn't know right away who did it. So it took him a year to figure out that it was the drug lord China. Which oh, is why I mentioned it earlier. So that way, there's connection. You see, Mister China. Mister China. How dare you say? Uh. So he ordered her to be killed. So he didn't actually do it himself, but he ordered her death. Ah. So his his underlings did it. Mister China's underlings. Yeah. So we. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a week after finding this out Pedro and a few of his men crashed China's brother's wedding um, oh boy yeah. wedding crashers in like the most horrific way and death yeah. Uh, so his men were given implicit instructions not to harm women or children oh. so it was only they were ordered only to kill the men and the women and children you don't touch them you don't hurt them whatsoever right. so I'm happy about that part. You know? Yeah, I suppose. Thank God for small miracles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when they arrived at the wedding, he ordered the women and children to go upstairs so they didn't have to witness any yeah. of it, which is nice, I guess. Uh, in total, seven men were killed and 13 others were injured, one of the dead being China. Once the massacre was over, they headed to the bar for a drink. It's not a very successful massacre. How many lived? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, over half the people live, but they got China, so that's that's the main thing, isn't it? I suppose. Mission accomplished. Senor China is dead. 
And now let's go for a drink. <laughs> they go to the bar afterwards. <laughs> Shaky ass bartender. Just like, what do you have, sir? <laughs> Potentially has blood all over his clothes <laughs> for witnessing it. The bartender has PTSD now. Yeah. But damn, he can make a good cocktail. Exactly. So this is where, at 18 years old, he would get the nickname Pentrino Matator, which means Little Pete the Killer, or the more popular name, Killer Petey. Killer Petey! Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming is like, uh, you know... Pedro is Peter, I guess. <laughs> like their their version of Peter. The adventures of Brazilian booty and killer killer Petey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think killer Pete probably just would have been better. Well, it's Petey because he's young, I guess. He's kind of more phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so on May twenty fourth, nineteen seventy three, Pedro was arrested at nineteen years old. At the time of arrest, Pedro was put into the back of a police car with two other criminals, one of which being a rapist. Well, hold on. What was he arrested for? The murders. Oh, like they got arrested at the... Not at, the... at them, but I, I can't confirm where they got arrested. It's just they got arrested for the murders. Or he got arrested for the murders. I don't know about his dudes that helped him. Okay. So he got arrested for the murders um, at 19. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um... So he's put into the back of a police car with two other criminals, one of which being a rapist, as we said. Uh, the cops left them in the car unattended for a small amount of time, and when they came back, he had already killed the rapist. Oh! Because <laughs> he doesn't like people doing shit to women or children. That's, so that's legit. Human. Yeah, yeah. So what are you in for? Oh, I was a rapist. Oh, nice to meet you. Stab. Or he will break his necks. Oh. So... That's you, but we'll get to that. I'm Brazilian Batman. I guess. Yeah. Uh, so prisons in Brazil are considered some of the most violent and dangerous in the world. Okay. Didn't know that. I mean, we know what their police department is like. I can only imagine their correctional yeah. facilities aren't amazing. Yeah. Uh, so they were overpopulated and diseases like dengue fever and tuberculosis uh, were kind of rampant. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Uh, cells were overcrowded with 12 people sharing one at a time. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so despite the conditions, Pedro didn't stop killing people while in prison. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> he only goes after criminals and he's in prison. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. like, that's a smorgasbord of, like, murder. Smorgasbord. <laughs> so he would befriend them by giving them food and other items and would either stab them or break their necks, as I mentioned. In the dark of the night. You would smell mung beans and knew your death was coming. <laughs> uh, his main targets were rapists, pedophiles, and murderers who killed women. <laughs> right on. <laughs> you do you, Killer Petey. Exactly. <laughs> he would even get fan mail from people asking him to take care of people that were in prison that hurt or killed their family members. Oh, wow. And he He's got would... like a Patreon. You want to see me kill another pedophile next week? <laughs> Donate to my Patreon. Or like Hitman. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if he felt the the request was genuine, he would do it free of charge. Like people would try to pay him for service. He's like, no, like this is what a, like this is just me writing the wrong. <laughs> Killy you know? Petey's a badass, right? right? I like this guy. Yeah. So many people gave him the nickname the Punisher, based on the Marvel character who is a visual anti that murders and tortures people in his campaign against crime. Right. Yeah. So that's what the people would call him is the Punisher. Which, yeah yeah, 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 that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, so since a lot of inmates hated him for obvious reasons, because he kept murdering them. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. While he's doing all this scary murdering, is he still walking around with no eyebrows? <laughs> I don't know. I, in the pictures I've seen, he has eyebrows. So I'm assuming he has eyebrows. <laughs> he just smell mung beans and he the man whose head looks like a penis comes towards you. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's, uh, he's got eyebrows. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, so some of them tried to ambush him in retaliation it didn't work out his plan for them however since Pedro killed three of them and injured the other two oh man so five people tried to gang up on him to kill him he killed three of them oh, <laughs> this guy's a ninja like what the right? heck right? so while in prison Pedro had discovered that his father had basically chopped his mother up with a machete oh yeah he yeah okay uh, and was convicted and was convicted for it. Uh oh. Um, coincidentally, after he found this out, his aunt sent him a cake uh, in prison, and Pedro shared this cake with cellmates. And I guess they have uh, stray dogs that uh, stay in the prison too. Okay. Uh, so he shared with the dogs. Uh, the cake was laced with poison, which made two of the dogs and some inmates collapse. 
So since this was being investigated, he was moved to a different prison, which was coincidentally the same prison that his dad was sent to. Wait, why did his aunt send him a poison cake? Couldn't find that out. <laughs> Couldn't find that out. I don't know. Well, this is for running my son's arm through a juicer. <laughs> Well, it's his cousin, so is yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't find that out, but that's why he got sent to the other prison, is because uh, they were investigating the poison cake. Well, you know, if you ever feel like you have a dysfunctional family, just remember, <laughs> it could be worse. Yeah, we're kidding. Yeah. Um, With the juicers and the machetes and the kicking of pregnant wives and uh, the and the poison uh, cakes and the... So bad. Yeah. So bad. Since he was sent to the same prison of his father, he got revenge by stabbing him 22 times for killing his mother. And then he carved out his heart in an attempt to eat it, but uh, spat it back out onto his father's corpse. Hmm. As he, I believe he felt like it would make him stronger, but then he couldn't chew it. His heart muscle, I think, is very tough to chew. <laughs> Having never eaten a man's beating heart, I couldn't give you much opinion on it. <laughs> I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's a strong muscle, so it'd be kind of chewy, I, I would imagine. Couldn't tell you. Um, either way, so yeah, stabbed his dad 22 times and then carved out his heart and then and tried to eat it in revenge for uh, his, him killing his mother. With I kind of like this guy a little. I mean, obviously, I don't condone just going around murdering people you feel are bad because that's kind of a slippery slope. Yeah. But at the same and time, the animal thing, I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, the dude did drink a cat's blood, but you know, uh, at the same time. It is kind of cool because his first partner was was a female, which you don't see in crime, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, and then on top of that, he's just like all about you know, kind of standing up for women and and, uh, and children, yeah, and children. So it's kind of neat. Again, he's yeah. not a perfect human being. Oh God, no! I'm I'm debating whether or not to call him a monster because he he's still a murderer well, and he's still that's... ripping out hearts and well, only dealing. Yeah, he didn't do that to anyone else. You know what? I'm just going to say he's a dude. I he's a he's a dude who's pretty dangerous. Judge him as you will. I'm going to just leave this one alone. Well, it goes to that whole philosophical debate, like that you, that you have, like watching something like Dexter. It's like, you know, how would you? How do you feel about that? About somebody that only kills criminals? Like, do you like that person? Do you feel that person's a hero? Like yeah. some some people do, and other people are like, no, murder is murder is murder. You know? I think. Mm, that's uh like it's an interesting uh that's that is yeah because you start to think about like the inner soul of a person that does that now legally speaking i i agree that they should be arrested and detained right because you can't let people take that into that decision into their own hands and start murdering people but as far as whether you yourself determine if this is a good bad or neutral person or some shade in between Mm -hmm. you know it's it's tough to say right yeah you know like yeah, really tough to say. I, I couldn't tell you, but... Yeah. Yeah. You got to think about that one on your own, people. Yeah, well, it's just an interesting, um, you know, philosophical mm-hmm. debate. Um, so, in prison, he had gone to kill 47 more men. Oh, boy. And his sentence would increase from 126 years to 400 years. <laughs> That'll teach him. Yeah. <laughs> so, he confessed to killing over 100 men, but was only officially sentenced to uh, for 71 murders. Yep. <laughs> uh, so at this time, however, the Brazilian government believed that no crime merits merits a sentence longer than thirty years. Oh, so I don't know what's the point of doing four hundred years if he's going to get out in thirty anyway. It didn't matter doing four hundred years when an average human lives to be about seventy eight. <laughs> yeah. He's already got a hundred thirty. You don't need to bother charging him for anything else. Yeah, well, they did anyway. Um, so although it's because of the prison conditions, it's practically unheard of for someone to live longer than 15 years in those conditions. Right, exactly. Seized to being killed by other inmates. So he was released on April 2007 after spending 34 years in prison. Oh, wow. So he lasted 34 years. They actually years. released him. He did, yeah. Yeah, they did. How did that happen? Like I said, there's no law, like no sentence. Oh. 30 year thing that I But he got 34 years. Yeah, I don't know what that was about, but um, <laughs> he, they just were like, yeah, no crime merits a sentence longer than 30 years. So then he got out uh, thirty uh, after 34 years. Now the smell of mung beans wafts through the night on a dark <laughs> evening. <laughs> well, not quite. Uh, so he would get arrested again in 2011 for a variety of charges, including inciting a riot. 
which I could not find any info about. And I was very curious. Yeah, that sounds like something. He's political now. <laughs> uh, yes. uh, he was fully released in 2018 and became uh, basically a celebrity. Oh. Like he's, he's famous. He's still alive today? Oh, yeah. yeah. No. I'm going to get into what he's doing now. Oh, okay. Uh, so he started his own YouTube channel called Pedro Matador uh, X Lazaro. Uh, Lazaro, sorry. Uh, which now has 253,000 followers. Wow. I, I did look on it, but it's all in Portuguese, so I have no idea what the hell he's saying. That's incredible. <laughs> Even the subtitles are in Portuguese. Huh. So, but yeah, yeah. Uh, so he started this channel to educate people that criminal acts are not something cool or to be proud of. Huh. Yeah. This from the man who murdered an absolute bucket ton of people. Yes, but they were all criminals, so... Okay. <laughs> Uh, that's what he said I am left confused that's what he said. <laughs> I am left I'm leaning say. towards him being good even with the pile of bodies behind him but yeah, I, yeah. I is confused <laughs> I don't understand you Pedro yeah. <laughs> um, so he now lives peacefully on a small farm and as far as we know he hasn't killed anyone since being released from prison although I believe he did say in an interview that if Somebody tried to harm his family, then he he would. Okay. So it's more so he's doing it, he would do it to protect his family. Now he's like sixty six now. Yeah. You know? I mean, but in his prime, he could take on seven men at once. I think he's still to be feared in his sixties. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Don't don't fuck with this guy. Which it would be so cool if like he heard this and then I could interview him about like his experiences. Uh, you know what? I'm okay. Cool. No, I'm okay oh. if we don't attract his attention. You just be peaceful on your farm, Pedro. Well, he only speaks Portuguese, I think. So. Either, either way, you just be peaceful. I will let you be. Please don't okay. notice me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> just um, in case. So long story short, a guy in Brazil was basically Dexter with a sense of justice um, and had a really shitty dad. Hmm. Yeah. Like, so I think he's better than Dexter. But his ability to fight, he's more like Batman. Yeah. He's like Brazilian Batman. That's true, yeah. He's kind of like... But he's called the Dexter. Well, he's like Bane. Bane's Brazilian, so he's kind of oh, like... He? Yeah, well, he's South American anyways. I'm not sure. If, if he's from Brazil. But either way, Bane yeah. is... Bane is. It's like if Bane decided to follow in Batman's footsteps, he would become Pedro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thanks for listening to our podcast and for all your feedback. Uh, check out our website, bondingovermurder.info, and find us on Instagram at Bonding Over Murder Podcast to so hang out and just get new episode info. Yeah. What? I'm supposed to say something? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, hold on, everyone. Hold on. Also, do not forget to follow us wherever you listen to the podcasts. Our next episode will be out September 13th. And for those of you who could not understand that, <laughs> it's uh, September 13th. Uh, so see you next time. Yes. Bye.